Hi there. In this lecture, we see an absolutely magical, thrilling Mikhail Tal game. And believe it or not, this is from a simultaneous display. So it's against Jack Miller in 1988. So it really kind of shows the reputation is justified of the magician from Riga. We have e4 from Tal. e5, knight f3, knight c6. So we go into the Italian game. We have the two knights defense. And now d4 is played. So this is the open variation. d4 is the open variation. So from a modern engine perspective, d3 might actually be the most accurate, followed by knight g5. So knight g5 does exploit the fact that the queen is no longer protecting the g5 square. You see that the connection to g5 has been lost. If black plays bishop c5, another mainline move, then we can't play knight g5 unless we want to lose a piece. Queen takes g5. So with knight f6, it's a sort of invite, kind of invitation for knight g5. But uh, yeah, Mikhail Tau is not interested in that. So d4, we have d6. d takes e5, and now a mistake, knight takes e4. This is an unprotected piece on e4. If d takes e5 had been played, say queen takes d8, check. In fact here, knight takes d8 is a good idea to secure f7, which means if white takes on e5, because f7 is secure, black can in fact take on e4 or play bishop d6 first, and then take on e4 in its even position. So that would be the safe way for black to play it. Not king takes, because that actually bishop takes f7 there in any case. Okay, so knight takes e4 though was played. So why is this a, mis is a mistake? So when we see an unprotected piece, quite often there's a resourceful way of tapping into that downside of a position. So for 100 points, can you see what white can play here? Yeah, bishop takes f7 check, exposes the king, and now we have queen d5 check, picking up that knight, so we have interest. So we're a solid pawn up here. Okay, so bishop e7, we have Mikhail Tell casting, d5, queen d3, queen d7, rook e1. Now this does carry with it a slight weakness of the last move, neglecting f2. And black's already got a kind of road on the f file. So is this dangerous for white? We see knight c3, king e8. So there's pressure on the f file now. And we see knight g5, which actually opens up the rook to look at f2. And now bishop c5. What is Mikhail Tell up to? Knight takes e6 is played, allowing bishop takes f2 check. And it seems as though, well, what about bishop takes e1 now? OK, so here, remember, it's a symbol. So even the great tower is not a supercomputer. He actually made a mistake here. He took on f8. There is actually another way to play this. Can you see what it is for 10 points? Yeah, we can actually take on d5. And three, four, five, six against five, we're a pawn up and the king's in the center. And it's a really quite a significantly advantageous position for white here. If queen takes e6, knight takes c7 check and we win the queen. If bishop a5, we can just carry on normally with bishop d2 to get our rook into the game. Rook f5, but now rook d1. And this position... Let's say king f7. The king's kind of stranded otherwise. Knight g5 check. g4. We can actually end up winning our material back. So this is a sequence where we win our material back. And black's king is still not safe here. So check, check. This is one example. And we don't want to allow checks to our king. So actually rook d1 here. Forget taking the rook. And this will end up with white having... A big advantage ending up winning material. So say here we're winning material or c5, c3. So yes it turns out 
yeah, Knight takes d5 does seem to be a winning position for white. Whatever happens there. So Knight takes f8 is a like a mistake. And now another mistake from Tal technically, which allows Knight b4. And it looks as though well Tal's back row has been exploited here. If the Queen moves now away from f1, then it's back row mate time, you know, Queen d4. So what has Tal has Tal messed this up? Then there's rook f1 checkmate. So we have queen e2, and now knight takes c2. So the queen can't take without rook f1 checkmate. So something really magical does happen here, though, in this position. So again, queen takes c2, rook f1 is checkmate. But Tal plays e6, and he's taking out escape squares of the opponent's king, quite a lot of them, in fact. And this is the source of magic, I'd say. The secret source. So queen d6 is actually a big mistake from black, and all of a sudden, Tau is actually winning this again, this position. If black had played queen c6, it might have been a different story. So say rook d1, d4, and here, king g1 means that. Queen takes c2 as possible without being back row mated. So say check though, king h1, knight e3. Black is significantly better here. And black is threatening queen takes g2. So we've got limited options, we're worse. But in fact, queen d6 was played. And here, this is a big mistake. Black has a very interesting idea of queen e5, you know, to try and lure the queen away for a back row mate. Guess what Tal plays here, which is tactically instructive indeed. Yeah? It's actually knight b5. So now queen e5 is played. So this is a really entertaining position. If queen c5, we can see some of the dangers after b4. The queen, the black queen, has to cling on to c7. Like the white queen has to cling on to f1 square. If the black queen goes away, say queen c4, then actually we first take on c4 and then knight takes c7 check and mate. Yeah, that's checkmate. And if queen f2, knight takes c7 as checkmate. So yeah, absolute magic is going on. And if queen c6, this is still a winning position for white after rook d1. There's a huge threat here. I know it looks like a bit slow maybe, but rook takes d5 is the huge threat for rook d8 checkmate. So if queen takes, there'll be knight takes c7 checkmate again. So let's say rook f5, and here it's, it's still a remarkably winning position. Can you see what white plays here? Rook takes d5, gets the rook to, to not be a danger to f1, which frees up the queen to go on an adventure. So black's not threatening any, any immediate checks here. So just to recap here, if, if also queen takes d5, again, we're going to be winning here with knight takes c7. And even though it's not checkmate, it's check, we have e7 push and then queening. That's going to be winning. So let's say here rook takes. Now there's no threat of rook f1 mating. We can play queen h5 check. And then just queen takes h7. And the threats are numerous of mating. Things like queen f7, knight takes c7. Yeah, this is horrible. Rook takes g5 check. And e7, this will be like mating. So it's fascinating that queen c5 will not help here after b4 just will not help so black played with queen e5 trying to deflect the queen from f1 with queen e5 magnificent move now a multi-purpose move is played these multi-purpose moves are, <laughs> i'm a big fan i hope you get to be a fan of multi-purpose moves we want to ideally make some space for our king and also our bishops attacked we need a multi-purpose move. Does one exist for 100 points? 
because we know that queen takes e2 there's knight takes c7 checkmate the multi-purpose move is h4 so space is made for the king well not quite now but it, it also protects the bishop queen g3 is the response if h6 not only could we just simply take the queen without being mated but we could also just checkmate in fact with queen h5 check it's even more incisive and then just checkmating so h4 is a really powerful multi-purpose move we have queen g3 now and now there's only one move but it's a very good one for a big advantage here can you see what it is for 100 points so the the queen is still blocking h2 so we still can't take on c2 without rook f1 being checkmate so actually rook d1 bringing another piece to the party with the big threat of rook takes d5 then rook takes and then on route to, to mating on d8 so rook takes d5 and then rook d8 is checkmate there we have rook f2 being played so if c6 though what does white play here you think which is crushing only move for advantage but a big advantage is rook d3 trying to evict the queen and queen b8 because what else if queen f2 then we've evicted the queen from c7 knight c7 is checkmate so let's go with queen b8 here but in this position rook f3 and in fact black's had it say bishop b4 taking on f8 e7 check queen e6 and that passed pawn is super dangerous it's absolutely winning yeah it's it's a really fun position this this variation rook d3 <laughs> it's, just, it's unbelievable isn't it if rook g8 we're just gonna now we can just freely take on c2 we've extinguished all the threats and now go for black's king with queen c5 threatening queen e7 checkmate how does black defend queen e7 checkmate black really can't black's going to give up the queen or something it's hopeless so anyway rook f2 was tried instead of c6 and now magnificent move here for 100 points guess what tell plays here truly magnificent stuff thrilling Queen takes f2. Yeah, black's in a terrible way with all these escape squares taken. We have bishop takes f2. So if queen takes f2 here, we have knight takes c7 check, and then the e pawn is pushed. And it's supported by the knight in any case, but it doesn't even need the support. Well, no, actually, it does for king f7. If king f7, the knight supports e8 so yeah but this this variation is absolutely winning we're a rook up and now we're not just a rook up we're a rook and bishop up so bishop takes f2 was tried rook takes d5 and now how does black defend against rook d8 checkmate it's really bad news so <laughs> queen takes h4 check is tried so white is material up here knight takes c7 check rook f5 check rook d5 this is absolutely a winning position the exchange up rook d7 knight before rook f7 check and now a sweet way of finishing here what would you play here for 10 points rook takes f6 yeah so we can queen our pawn if g takes e7 and then you know queen our pawn so knight c6 we have rook f7 g6 e7 and this ends the game so if king takes we're queening our pawn so it's absolutely an iconic game even though it was in a civil it became an absolutely iconic celebrated game so this is the open variation from an opening perspective we don't we can keep this as a secret weapon we can you know you can choose based on your moods the circumstances of the game your opponent's rating and taking all the other factors and variables 
to the side between knight g5, which might not come as a surprise to opponents, you know, d3 or even d4, as this game shows. There's mileage in d4 being dangerous, as we see in this magnificent game example. Okay, thanks very much. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that game sample. It's actually from my course, which you can find at the King's Crusher TV page, which has great discounts. It's the Italian game Mastery, the Ideal Beginners opening. So just very briefly, if we click there, you can also see other free sample videos. Just do expand all sections and you can see these preview links if you want to see other free previews and get an idea of the course yourself. I'm going to keep it short here. Just basically to say I had a fantastic time seeing many, many brilliant games in the Italian game. You can see from the number of collections how epic some of these games are that they've been collected like hundreds of times at chessgames.com. And yeah, I, I really hope you check out this index and may consider getting the course. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.